So the issue that we were dealing with was that in early, in mid-2011, it was announced that the America's Cup finals of the world-class sailing event of the America's Cup would be held in San Francisco Bay, which is also one of the major working ports for um, containerized traffic. Uh, Oakland Harbor is historically the number three or number four containerized cargo port in the United States. Um, a lot of refining capacity, about half or 60 percent of California's oil refining capacity is in San Francisco Bay, um, the nation's number three ferry system uh, by volume of passengers is in San Francisco Bay. So our goal was how to help, how to make this event happen, this sailing event happen on San Francisco Bay while balancing all of the other needs and demands of a, a pretty small geographic area of water. So that was, our, that was our problem that we were presented with. So the process that we went through was very focused on making sure that all of the voices were heard and that everyone had an equal or, yeah, an equal seat at the table and a say in, in how it was managed. In the Coast Guard, we call it waterways management. And it is that balance between all of the, the different uses of the bay. But really what we ended up with is a, a zoned plan that allowed for the race to happen in a, in a designated space, in a, in a protected time, so that nothing's going to disrupt the race while it's happening, while also making room for all of the deep draft vessel traffic to still enter the bay and go to points in the North Bay and to Oakland around the perimeter of the race, allowed for the commuter ferry traffic to keep moving, even though the entire access to the San Francisco city front where the where the ferries tie up was also prime viewing area for the race to cre we created basically a zoning plan that allowed all of those things to be balanced and in the end um, it was actually a two-year event the America's Cup World Series events that happened in the summer of 2012 and then the finals in the summer of 2013 all in all I believe it was about 65 days of racing and in those 65 days of racing we did not have any delay to any commercial traffic moving in or out of the bay. We had done an excellent job between the, the Coast Guard and all of our industry stakeholders and the other government agencies that were involved in the America's Cup Race Management as a partner in the process in creating this scheme that just made it look effortless that this race was happening on San Francisco Bay. And that was a, it was a, like I said, it was a good feeling, but it was somewhat bittersweet because it was like, well, you can't even, you can't even tell that, <laughs> that we had to do all of that work to get there. And the reason why I'm here talking about it is that the Coast Guard has the regulatory authority over marine events that are happening to, to regulate them. My view of what the Coast Guard did in that process was really to serve as the, the third party or like honest broker between all of the different entities that had a seat and a voice and a concern. We didn't have a vested interest in, in the event happening per se, the way that the America's Cup Race Management or the, the city ended up having a, a vested interest in making sure the race happened. Uh, we don't have a monetary interest in the movement of goods and cargo. Our main goals are two things, first safety, and then ensuring that equal access and the facilitation of maritime commerce on the water, which included not just the normal deep draft uses, oil tankers and container ships and the ferry traffic, but also the other economic pieces of the, the small fishing charters that go out and the small day boats that go out for cruises. So after the World Cup Series, uh, the America's Cup World Series races in 2012, we were feeling pretty good about the plan for 2013. Everything had worked out well. And then there were two incidents that happened. Uh, the first was in October of 2012, one of the teams capsized and it was a complete loss of their vessel swept out the Golden Gate. And then in May of 2013, there was an unfortunate accident with another of the sailing teams during a practice day. They were out just sailing on the bay during an unregulated practice day and they had a capsize and experienced the, the loss of one of their sailors. So after that loss of life, 
it's sort of made us go back to the drawing board to take a look at our overall plan and say, is this, is this adequate? Um, big question that was asked immediately in the wake of that was that the, the public sort of looked at the Coast Guard and said, I thought you guys were supposed to ensure safety. How can you allow this event to happen when it's clearly not safe? So after that accident, the America's Cup Event Authority went back to look at all of their safety concerns to sort of reevaluate and see if they had all the appropriate safeguards in place. And we took a look at our overall management plan to say, is this still adequate? Can we have ferry vessels that are coming through this transit lane uh, when we're not sure if these vessels are losing control in a way that we didn't think that they would lose control. And so we, we looked at everything um, and made the decision that we needed to extend an area of the race box. And by doing that, we were actually encroaching more onto the small amount of space that we had left for deep draft vessel traffic to transit. So we needed to make sure that we weren't putting one element of users in more danger by trying to protect others. So we sort of had to go back to the drawing board a little bit, back to those stakeholder engagement that we had had such strong um, engagement with during the beginning of the process to sort of look at a slightly revised plan, to look at extending in particular the northeast corner of the box to see if we could accommodate that. We incorporated AIS track data to see, okay, we know theoretically where the ships are going, but what do they really do in practice? What, what line are the pilots actually taking when they're lining up to make their transit underneath the Bay Bridge? And through that process, we were able to make an adjustment to the race course and sort of meet in the middle of what the event authority ended up asking for for an extension of the race course and what the, the Pilots Association felt they needed for transiting safely. And we were able to accommodate that by just adding an additional element onto the plan that hadn't existed before. And so what had seemed to be written in stone to some extent of that this is how we're doing it was flexible enough to allow us to be able to add those additional elements on to ensure that the race could still proceed safely or as safely as possible, and in particular protecting the rest of the public on the outside of the race box from any unfortunate accidents that might happen again after that. But I think that it was that really early engagement that was extremely important, and then it, it wasn't letting that early engagement sit. It was consistently refreshing that. It was keeping the lines of communication open so that everyone knew that as things changed, we were going to be open with those changes, that we were going to bring it back to our stakeholders. And so it was a success from all of those standpoints that no one was left out, everyone was represented, and I think in the end, everyone looked at that and was proud to say, to see San Francisco on everyone's TV screens and, and to know that they had a part of making that event happen.